Hi, I'm Dr. Yuzalak, and today's topic is anxiety. I plan to talk about it even prior to the COVID-19 pandemics, but now we may have increase of the anxiety due to the stress and the fear, and also a lot of people lost their jobs. We might have poor diet or limited activity and socializing, so those can all be the triggers to start being anxious, even if we were not. Today, we're going to go over the possible causes of the anxiety. We're going to talk a little bit more about neurotransmitters, pharmaceutical and over-the-counter treatments. And then we're going to talk about telemedicine or e-visits at the end. How I see the anxiety is, imagine that you're drowning in the lake with the dirty water and you can grab a lifesaver in order to keep your head above the water and not drown. This lifesaver might be your pharmaceutical medicine or a supplement to release the anxiety, right? So that's great. For a while, you can just flow. But eventually, you might want to get yourself out of that dirty water and maybe even find out how and why you ended up in it at the first place. That's where the causes of the anxiety come in place, digging deep down and figuring out what got us to this point. Today, we're gonna to talk about both the lifesavers for just helping us float in that water and also the ways to get us out of that pond. There are different types of the anxiety, so I'm just gonna mention a few today. Agoraphobia, when a person is afraid to leave their home. Uh, generalized anxiety, panic disorder, separation anxiety. This one is typically present in kids a lot. Social anxiety, substance-induced anxiety. There are specific phobias to certain things. Uh, selective mutism and also anxiety due to other medical conditions. What can be the symptoms in the adults? A lot of things can be uh, happening. You can feel disconnected, feeling tightness in the chest, that you can't breathe, that the room has no air, overthinking headaches, having hyperventilation and shortness of breath and being nervous, restless, uh, having sense of the impending danger, sweating, trembling, feeling tired, having trouble sleeping. This is a very frequent symptom difficulty contouring your worry or having urge to avoid things that trigger your anxiety. Those are all symptoms of anxiety in the adults. In kids, it's very similar, but in kids, they can sometimes just come out with headache or more often with abdominal pain. And um, this pain is real. The trigger can be actually anxiety, and we need to look into what is causing the anxiety. The other symptoms that they can have is difficulty sleeping or anger, defiance, also meltdowns and going through the roof with their emotions from being completely fine to just escalating with their emotions, having lack of focus or avoidance, negativity, over planning, all that. And so now we're going to talk about the causes. There can be external factors such as mold exposure, uh, also EMF and Wi-Fi exposure. EMF is electromagnetic field radiation and Wi-Fi exposure. Uh, this is real and there's more and more now studies uh, showing that a lot of people can be affected by it. Uh, though that's the radiation you can get from your Wi-Fi's and cell phones and routers and uh, cell towers. Um, so we'll talk about some ways how we can avoid that. Also glyphosate or Roundup exposure. Uh, this is the stuff that people spray on their lawns so they don't have the weeds and it's very toxic. It can also cause cancer. Then uh, foods such as gluten and food sensitivities, they can be the oil to your fire in the body, your inflammation uh, and make things worse. So we do have some tests to check if you are sensitive to certain foods or gluten. And then also it can be medication side effects. 
as far as our body, the big problem can be our gut. If the gut doesn't work properly, then the brain might not work that well. And why is that? It's because they are very much connected, our gut and our brain. They're connected through the chemicals such as hormones and neurotransmitters. They act as chemical messages that pass between the gut and the brain. So imagine our gut and brain speaking their own language through those chemical messages. And for example, if that communication gets broken or wrong messages start being sent, we may develop symptoms such as anxiety, depression, or maybe even uh, GI symptoms such as nausea or vomiting. So we'll talk more about these chemical messages in the next part about neurotransmitter section. Also, we have a lot of bacteria, viruses, and fungi normally living in our gut, and they're called the gut microbiome. They are happy and balanced if everything is fine, but they can also get out of the balance, and many illnesses can happen such as IBS, so irritable bowel syndrome or SIBO, small intestinal bowel overgrowth. Also, we can have leaky gut, which is high permeability of our gut when our gut has bigger holes instead of being very tight and uh, it can become hyperpermeable or leaky and then more toxin can get into it and inflame it. And also, uh, we can have overgrowth of either parasites or candida in our uh, gut and that can totally change the balance of the gut and we can start having symptoms. Adding to this autoimmune disease and inflammation, thyroid problems, unstable, mostly low blood sugar levels, and tired and fatigued adrenal system. And remember, adrenal system is the system that controls fight and flight mode. If that gets out of the balance, then it can start constantly being alert and we can feel that we are in the prolonged fight or flight mode. Also low magnesium and low histamine uh, could be one of the causes for anxiety. And then the next one is our brain chemistry. Our neurotransmitters in the brain, some of them can be low and we can start having anxiety symptoms. Neurotransmitters are the juices, that's how I call them, the brain juices that transmit the impulses throughout the central nervous system, and they have a huge impact on our mental health, how we act and how we feel. A wide range of our neurotransmitters, or the brain juices, so I call them, such as dopamine, norepinephrine, serotonin, or GABA, are made and consumed by our gut bacteria. So we're going back to our little gut bacteria, and so those juices are made from the tiny building blocks that are called aromatic amino acids, such as tryptophan, tyrosine, phenylalanine. This means in order for your brain to work well, it's important that your gut works well and that you have enough of the good building blocks to build those brain juices. So if you don't, then your brain juices can be low, your neurotransmitters can be low, and you can start feeling a certain way. So let's say that your GABA is low. Uh, what you might feel is overwhelmed, stressed, burned out, have panic attacks, stiff muscles, suffer from insomnia or rectal spasms. You can also crave alcohol and carbs. So if this is the case, you may benefit from taking GABA supplement. And for example, if your serotonin levels are low, you may feel fearful and worried, irritable, having obsessive thoughts and behaviors, negativity, depression, low self-esteem and poor self-confidence, uh, anxiety that can get worse during the winter time, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. If this is the case, you may benefit from taking the serotonin building block called tryptophan. So that's an amino acid that works as the building block to build your serotonin levels. Low catecholamines, which are your dopamine, norepinephrine, and epinephrine. People who have the low uh, catecholamines uh, can easily get bored. They can have lack of focus, lack of drive and motivation. They can be procrastinating things, craving caffeine and carbs or alcohol for the energy. 
And if this is the case, they may benefit from tyrosine. But you gotta be careful with this one because if you have, for example, if you suffer from migraines or uh, headaches, high blood pressure or bipolar disorder, it may worsen it. So you want to consult with your healthcare practitioner. People with low endorphins can be very sensitive to the physical pain and emotional pain. They can be crying or tearing up very easily and uh, taking emotional comfort in eating. They simply love their food. They love their chocolate. They love their wine. And they can also love some drugs and certain behavior. They're craving the reward or they're craving the numbing effect of the certain drug or certain alcohol. And so that way they're trying to boost their endorphins with maybe low. The over-the-counter supplement called uh, phenylalanine uh, working as a building block for these low endorphins. I'm also going to mention here the low blood sugar levels. Uh, the symptoms for that um, can be, we can be irritable, shaky, having headaches or craving sweets and starch or alcohol. Uh, also, we can be uh, feeling very lightheaded if we miss the meals and also agitated and nervous and easily upset. You all maybe notice the, the hangry state when you're hungry and angry, that's your low sugar levels. Uh, treatment is a little bit more complex uh, because you need to figure out first why you're having the hypoglycemia or the low blood sugar levels. Our uh, practitioners can kick in and help out with doing certain tests to see why this is happening to you. Now, if you're listening to me talking about all these symptoms and thinking, okay, I might be having all of them or I might have majority of them, that actually is quite frequent to happen. And that's very normal. That's why we have our practitioners uh, help you to decide which combination of the supplements can work for you. And we'll talk about the uh, special uh, questionnaire that you can fill out, which can help us decide what you need to supplement yourself with. Now we're going to move into the triggers. And the triggers for the anxiety can be many things. For example, having too much to do can be very overwhelming and that can be somebody's trigger to feel very anxious or having to confront someone, your boss, your loved one, or somebody that you have conflict with. Also, giving a presentation can be very stressful for certain people. And then just stress. Stress is the biggest, as you can see, the biggest trigger here, which can happen at home, at work. The stress can be financial, especially during these times when a lot of people are losing their jobs. Also, it can happen from the emotional trauma, serious medical illness. And I had to add pandemics and COVID-19 because this has been a very big stressor. It can be a side effect from the medication and also it can be uh, due to the use of some drugs. What are the tests that we can, as practitioners, order for you in order to learn more about your body, how it functions? I'm going to mention just a few. There is a lot of heavy metals in the air and in the water and in our food. So uh, some people can get rid of them faster and some can't. So we do have the test that we can check in urine. If you're having too many of them, you will be spilling them out so we can detect them in the urine. We can also check your gut microbiome and see uh, which bacteria you're growing in your gut. Uh, this test checks for over 170 different types of bacteria and we can see if they're in the balance or not. Food sensitivity tests, I like doing a lot because instead of just blindly not eating gluten or dairy or some other foods, um, we can actually do the targeted diet where we do the test, which checks for over 99 different foods and tells us exactly what is inflaming your body. So this is not a food allergy testing. This is not what you're allergic to, but sensitive to and what's inflaming your body. It can be a pineapple, a garlic, or it can be a big one as such as egg or gluten or, or dairy. The other test that I really like doing is cortisol levels, checking it from saliva. We do it four times per day in the morning, midday, afternoon, and, and evening. And we can see if the cortisol levels are normal or abnormal, if they're high or low, and that can help us detect if you have 
just adrenal fatigue from too much stress, or if you have uh, some other medical conditions. And this last test is the comprehensive gluten test that checks for all the parts of gluten, gliadin and glutamine, and it goes much more in depth than what we are used with the regular tests that we order as practitioners from the blood, the typical celiac test. So this one is much more detailed and it can help us to discover if we have sensitivity to gluten or we do have actually the celiac disease. And now we're gonna go into the treatments. There are a lot of techniques and uh, things that you can do to uh, manage your stress. So the first one I'm going to talk about is practicing deep breathing. So taking, for example, three breaths in and then six breaths out or four in and, and eight out. So prolonging your exhalation can help to trigger the nerve called vagus to help to lower your heart rate and calm you down. You can practice that or you also have a lot of applications on the phone that can help you with this breathing. Taking cold shower. If you haven't heard about Wim Hof or the Iceman, you can find it easily on internet. And it's very useful tool to reboot our brain and uh, actually get rid of the anxiety. Exercise is very important, as you know, for multiple reasons, for our immunity, for our brain, for our gut. And then there's an intermittent fasting. What is that? That's actually not eating for about 12 to 16 hours. The goal is maybe to not eat for about 16 hours. The longer you don't, you're actually going to give your body the time to recuperate and repair. Intermittent fasting, even that it sounds pretty long, actually it's not that bad. So let's say that you want to not eat for about 16 hours. You can stop it eight o'clock at night and then you can resume eating again at noontime or stop at 6 p.m. and then start eating again at 10 a.m. So that's enough time to give your body to recuperate and repair. Eating balanced and healthy diet, I can't stress enough, you know me by now, I'm all about eating healthy and eating all colors of the vegetables and fruit and I'm not going to spend too much time talking about this today. Sleep is crucial. We need to have some good quality sleep. Not important that much how long you're sleeping, but you need to have a very good quality of the deep sleep. Doing hobbies helps a lot, limiting caffeine and alcohol. And then we are going into the relaxation techniques, which are your meditation, mindfulness, and prayer. Um, I like the expression don't give up just let go you need to learn to let go and to start being mindful about small things so maybe keeping your mind occupied just with your breath and that way clearing it out from all the other thoughts that are running through your brain and through your mind and then we're going to talk about how we are going to reduce the emf exposure it can be as easy as just either turning off your router or cell phone or you can put your cell phone on the airplane mode and that way your alarm will still work and wake you up in the morning, but you are not going to uh, have the exposure to all these waves during your sleep because usually your phone is very close to your head and then it can uh, interfere and radiate your head and brain while you're asleep. And trying to reduce exposure to toxins by being uh, more outside in the nature, in the woods, and taking long walks or also minding what you're eating, uh, not eating too much of the processed foods, et cetera, et cetera. And there's a whole bunch of complementary treatments such as acupuncture, traditional medicine, Ayurveda, music therapy, because those frequencies, especially for the classical music, can be very soothing for our brain. Homeopathic medicine, Reiki and energy medicine. I'm not going to spend too much time about either one of those because we use a lot of these options at the clinic. So we can work with you together to decide what will be the best option for you. And then there's over-the-counter treatments with the CBD oil, 
magnesium. Magnesium is a building block for some neurotransmitters, especially GABA. So when you're stressed, magnesium level goes down and by adding magnesium back up into your system, it's going to help you sleep better and also help you feel better. Castor oil packs, well, they've been used for, for centuries. And castor oil pack, you put it around your liver and the, around your gut area. And you can leave it for a few hours or you can leave it overnight. And it actually helps the body to detoxify from the environment from heavy metals and also helps the bowels to work better, to get the bowel movement out faster and to balance out your microbiome that we talked about that it's so important. And there's a whole bunch of herbal medicine that we can give you more tips after we talk to you and look into the root causes of your problems. And then again, everybody is familiar with the medication part. I'm not going to go over them because you can just read and see you all heard about mostly all of them. And those are your lifesavers, right? So those can help you to float in that pond as well as the ones that I mentioned previously, your CBD and, and over-the-counter medicine, um, they can help you float, but eventually you do want to still get out of that water. Yes, you're not drowning anymore, but you don't want to keep floating there, so you need to get out and find the causes. Let's mention also counseling, cognitive therapy, and behavioral therapy. Uh, which I would combine with anything else that you're doing because somebody needs to help you out to go through this. And in the end, telemedicine. So today I'm just going to tell you the topics we're going to talk about with our providers, uh, nurse practitioner Anna Weissach and nurse practitioner Yelena Ozegovic. We are going to talk to them about how this e-visit looks like when you can have a, your e-visit with us. It doesn't matter where you live any longer because the distance is not an issue anymore. We're going to tell you about the anxiety form that we use for the patients to fill out and that can help us to decide what neurotransmitters might be low in your particular case. And uh, with that, we can decide on a certain medicine, um, pharmaceutical or over-the-counter one. And then we always pay attention to the dietary changes. So nutrition consult, uh, we're gonna talk about first and second line therapy for the anxiety. And then we're also giving you the tip how to take GABA most effectively. And we're gonna mention a few homeopathic medicine that I love using because if you find the right medicine for you, it might alleviate your symptoms very fast and effectively. And so we're gonna mention all this in a very brief video that it's coming up. If you have more questions or if you want to schedule an appointment with us, just call our office and we will schedule uh, an e-visit or you can come to our office. This is all for now. Thank you for listening, stay healthy, and we'll see you back again soon. Bye-bye.